It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS television news staff and August Hexer, chief editorial writer for the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Homer Capehart, United States Senator from Indiana. A couple of months have passed since the Federal Housing Administration slipped and fell into a sticky morass of scandal. For nearly 10 years, we're told, sharp operators have made windfall profits out of various FHA projects. Now, our guest tonight, as chairman of the Senate Banking and Finance Committee, is investigating the scandal. So we'd like to ask Senator Capehart, since some prominent names have been mentioned in this mess, uh, both builders and their backers, are these people actually guilty of violating the law? <coughs> well, I don't know that I should answer that question. Uh, because we're investigating them at the moment, and I'm chairman of the committee, and I always try to be fair and honest with these people, and I don't think I should prejudge them. Uh, however, I will say this, that it, it looks as though at the moment there's been a lot of irregularities. It looks as though there has been a lot of mis or maladministration on the part of those administering the law and laws in the past, and that it's been very loosely handled. Uh, whether there'll be violations uh, remains, of course, for the courts to decide. Well, will you pass this on to the Department of Justice, oh, your yes, findings? Oh, yes, of course. And the Department of Justice, of course, have someone sitting there uh, each day at our hearings. Senator Capehart, uh, when did these hearings begin? They began they be on Monday of this week. And how long will they continue, do you expect? Oh, I suspect it's going to take the biggest part of this year. I doubt very much if we finish before December. Well, Senator, do you think this is going to be a political issue, actually, the... Uh, the uh, malfeasance was started perhaps in the previous administration, but it has been going on apparently on the present administration now. Is there any political angle to it? Well, I, I don't think uh, we, we certainly are not doing it for political reasons. But however, as I have repeatedly said, we're going to let the chips fall where they may. And of course, the, uh, the 608 projects that you read so much about in the papers was, uh, ha happened 100 percent, of course, under the, administ uh, the Democratic administration because the law was passed in 1940 and expired in 50. Uh, I would say that all the rental properties that are involved, and that is the big end of it, uh, of course, happened uh, prior to Eisenhower's uh, uh, administration. Now, the Title I, uh, that's loans uh, for repair purposes to homes. That has been going on since uh, uh, Mr. Eisenhower uh, took office, uh, and I suspect there's been some uh, uh, irregularities uh, since that time. But uh, uh, you want to remember that the President of the United States and Mr. Cole, the top administrator, are the ones that uh, exposed this whole matter and called it to the attention of the Congress and the American people and asked that something be done about it, and they have discharged uh, uh, quite a number of uh, high government officials. Well, Coleman Andrews says that about sixty-five and a half million dollars has been uh, made hay out of. Now, is there any chance of recollecting that money? I, ca I, I can't answer that. That's that's a matter for the for the courts to decide. Uh, it's hard for us at this stage to t say whether whether it can be uh, uh, collected or not. I just don't know. Senator Capehart, uh, have have these uh, irregularities been due? Do you think to basic defects in the law? or to uh, bad and administrators? I think it's been due to both. I think the law was loosely drawn. I think it was bad administration. And then I think part of it is just the good old uh, ingenuity of the American people or the American businessman to uh, get around the uh, loopholes. Well, Senator Capehart, the administration has been counting, uh, as President Eisenhower said, on a booming housing program to keep the national economy in balance. Now, is this going to hurt the housing no, program, you no, think, this scandal? Not, this shouldn't hurt it. It ought to help it, because it ought to get more uh, what I call uh, call real uh, honesty and constructive ideas into the housing business. Well, now, uh, the housing bill, as I understand it, is in conference. Has that bill uh, taken into account the defects yes, that have been shown we, up? We, yes. The House had passed the bill before the irregularities broke. Uh, well, we in the Senate had finished our hearings, but we had not uh, handled the bill in committee. 
And when the so-called scandals broke, uh, uh, we held some hearings, uh, primarily with government officials, and we believe that we have written into the existing law a sufficient uh, uh, legislation to, to stop all the uh, loopholes. And is the new housing program uh, more liberal in its credit terms? Does it make it easier for people to build homes? There isn't any question what the present house, the housing bill that we're considering at the moment and I think will become a law within the next couple of weeks is the most liberal that has ever been offered the American people. In other words, the scandal hasn't hurt the liberality of the program. It, well, that, that's correct. But have any provisions been written in to, uh, oh, to close the difference between oh, the estimated oh, cost oh, of building oh, and amounts that allowed under these FHA mortgages? We have written into the law uh, that uh, when a builder is finished uh, with his project that he adds up the total costs and then uh, uh, certifies that that is the cost and then uh, uh, the government only insures... Uh, uh, 90 or 80 or 85 or 95 percent, depending upon what the law is under specific titles, uh, uh, that amount. And we certainly are going to uh, stop uh, what we what we know and uh, think of as windfall profits. We're we're not going to permit that anymore. Do you think the, the American people don't want it? And I don't think the builders want it. That is the honest builder. I don't think he wants it. Well, incidentally, some uh, dwellers in uh, multiple housing projects have refused to pay their rent for a while. Are they legally in their rights to do no, so? No, I don't think they're legally within their rights, uh, and we've heard very little of that. Uh, and, and I think that uh, if we find that any of them are within their rights, that that ought to be adjusted peacefully, and they ought not to uh, uh, organize and get excited about the matter, because that won't help any. Senator Capehart, will this housing bill uh, form, do you think, an important part of the President's program? Will it be an important issue in the coming campaigns? I mean, an well, issue to prove that the Republicans are doing something constructive and, and uh, good for well, the people. Well, as I said before, it's the most liberal housing bill ever offered the American people, and it ought to go and will go a long ways towards uh, particularly furnishing houses for the more the, the low-income uh, uh, people in the United States. And, and, uh, we, and, and we have a new angle in this housing bill that, that, will, that will eliminate uh, uh, slums in the future. Uh, we're, we're trying to avoid the slums occurring uh, uh, rather than waiting until we do get a slum condition and <laughs> clear it up. We're, we're, we, in this bill, we've written in some features that if it works, and I think it will work, and I hope it will, we, we, here in, in the future we will never have slums. They, we, we'll stop them before they develop into slums. Well, Senator Capehart, uh, now that uh, you're talking about the work of the present administration, actually now that your party has the uh, authority and the responsibility for running the country. How do you still feel that uh, the standby controls, which you were once against and then favored, should be a part of well, the national economy in this I, international I, I situation? I don't think I was ever against them, uh, but I, I certainly am in favor of them, and I've always been in favor of uh, standby controls. I, I think we ought to have uh, uh, standby controls, giving the President of the United States the right to to impose, impose price, wage, and rent controls the minute an emergency occurs rather than waiting uh, either, e even 24 hours. Well, Senator, I think uh, I've always been in favor of that and, uh, and think that we ought to have that sort of a law. Now, you remember I introduced it last yes. year and tried to get it through, mm -hmm. but I failed and uh, uh, I, I see no chance to, to do it e e this year. Well, Senator, speaking of the international situation, as a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, you made an intensive tour of Latin America last year, I guess it was, yes. and uh, when you were down there, did you uh, think that there was anything we could do to prevent these Latin American countries from adopting uh, extreme uh, political systems? Well, I, yes, I think what we ought to do is to pay, to pay more attention to Latin America, and I think we ought to cooperate with them more than we have in the past, and I think we ought to loan them more money on longer terms, and when I say loan more money, I'm not mean, I don't necessarily mean the government, I'm talking about private enterprise. I think we ought to give them longer terms on the things that we sell them. Uh, I think we ought to know more about them, and, uh, and, and uh, we ought to encourage them to build up their own production, uh, uh, their own factories, and their own uh, processing of food uh, uh, plants, and uh, uh, we ought to help them to build up uh, uh, their own industry, thereby giving jobs to their own people. Well, how about our, our tariffs? Are you in favor of reducing those in the reciprocal I, trade bill? I think the tariff is the least end of our uh, the, this international trade business. I, I, I'm not for either 
extreme high tariffs, and I'm certainly not for free trade, but uh, I think we pay too much attention to the tariff. I think the thing that we ought to pay more attention to is, uh, is long terms and, and more loans and more credit uh, rather than uh, the tariff, because our tariffs in comparison to other nations are quite low, and we, we do not have uh, export taxes as they do. Uh, uh, and while I think we ought to pay attention to the tariffs, I don't think they ought to be too high. Uh, nevertheless, I, I can't see much good in, 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 in throwing 10 million Americans or 10,000 Americans out of work in order to give 10,000 people someplace else jobs. I'd rather handle it on the basis of loaning them money and, and helping them to create their own factories, thereby uh, uh, having money to, to, so they can sell and buy among themselves. I want to create more jobs in, in, in foreign countries uh, as well as more jobs here. I don't, I don't want to handle this whole business on the basis of throwing people out of work here in order to give jobs there or throwing people out of work there in order to give jobs in this country. Well, but I think it can be handled on a basis of, of, of everybody having a job. But then you feel that as the jobs are built up and the factories are built up in the other countries, the trade with our country increases. That's right. You know, that's no question about that. Well, how about these dollar shortages that these other countries complain of, sir? Well, of course they've got dollar shortages. I've always had a dollar shortage, too, and I, I suspect you have. I don't know anybody in the United States that hasn't had a dollar shortage. I've never had enough dollars. They don't have enough dollars. Therefore, we ought to give them more credit so to make the, the dollars that they do have go farther. That's what we do in the United States. We sell on the installment. Well, should the plan. government do this, or should private industry give them this? I think government credit? possibly can do part of it, but it primarily ought to be done with uh, with by private industry. Well, thank you very much, Senator Kaye, for a very frank discussion. Well, thank you, sir. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speaker. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was. Larry Lasseur and August Hexer. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Homer Capehart, United States Senator from Indiana. What does the name Longines mean to you? It means a watch to be sure, but much more. The name Longines on the dial of a watch means that here is one of the finest of all the world's watches. The movement in every Longines watch is regarded everywhere as being exceptionally fine. Every part is exquisitely finished for greater accuracy and long life, for better timekeeping and complete dependability. Yes, the name Longines on a watch means something very fine. It spells the utmost in satisfaction, confidence, and pride of ownership. The name Longines identifies what is, in fact, the world's most honored watch, the only watch in history to win 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes, 28 gold medals, and so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And wonderful as it may seem, you may buy and own or proudly give the world's most honored watch, Longines, for as little as $71.50. And remember that if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, you're paying the price of a Longines. Why not insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches. There is only one Atmos, a perpetual motion clock created by Le Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by unfailing daily variations in the temperature of the air. Atmos, product of Le Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor. 